Hello, I am Ines Zalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a Marauders map from Harry Potter just like this. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support the channel or you want to back engineer this project file, you can buy the project file with the link in the description. And for those that do want to follow this tutorial, let's continue. We'll need a few things for this tutorial. So what you'll need, some paper textures like these, you can definitely find these on Google. And then of course the Marauders map, which you can also find on Google. So we need something like this uh, that we're going to use. And then you'll also need some kind of designs like this um, in the project file this is given with it but this is a whole other tutorial so um, this is made in Photoshop and yeah uh, you'll need to find some of these or make some yourself for this tutorial and then of course you will need a footprint just like this which you can also find on Google so everything you can find online and let's get started with the tutorial so what I will do first is create a new composition and I will actually make it 1920 by 800 because that's a little bit more movie like I really like the composition of that aspect ratio and then I'm going to rename this to main comp like so and we can make it like 24 fps like in a real movie and then of course we'll, we'll make it like 10 seconds long so that's uh 300 frames well actually because we're working in uh 24 it's 240 uh frames uh which is actually 10 seconds okay so click okay and then we'll have something like this the first thing that we'll do is actually bring in our map so right here I will bring this into my composition and of course I will have some quality loss but I really want to zoom in here so we'll zoom it like so and just position it right over here and then I will bring one of my paper textures on top of that and this is going to uh, add that kind of crumble or whatever uh, you should call it like so Toggle the switches and change the mode to multiply right here and we'll get something like this which is pretty cool. So now, now let's continue with creating another composition and I'll just make this full HD, doesn't really matter that much. And we'll click OK and actually I'm going to rename this to uh, design name for example and click OK. And then I will bring one of my designs in here. So you will need to um, make one of your own in Photoshop. It's actually rather simple to do. Uh, it's also included in the project file right here. So I'm going to scale this up until it actually fits my composition a little bit. So we'll scale it like so, put it right over here. And then I will go to my text tool and write my name here. So I will write Inezalea. And there we go. And of course, I will change my font to something else. So let's see what we can use here. I'm going to use the font Sweet Pea, uh, which you can actually download on defont.com. Uh, right here, I will use this. So like this, and actually I will make it um, regular written text like so. I will position it right over here. And of course, change the color to a nice dark brown color like so and click OK and then press T on the keyboard and change the opacity to around 90 or something like that. Now we can position it a little bit better so maybe rotate it a little bit uh, make it a little bit bigger and there we go. And of course this is completely up to you. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. And there we go. Okay. And then I will go to my main comp and go to my project manager and drag in my design name right. I will select these two and drag them out here and then select everything else and just make this in a new folder so we actually have um, a nice overview here. So we have the main comp, the design name, where we dragged in the design name onto our composition. And then I will click on my background and actually darken my background a little bit. So I'll go to color correction curves and bring down my curves right here for the background and then go into the design name go to effect color correction curves again and then bring it up right here so we kind of meet in the middle of our color and we get something more like this i will go into the red channel here and take away some of the reds also for the greens i'm going to take away some of the greens for the blue um, maybe we'll introduce or actually take away some blues as well go back into the rgb colors and 
bring it up a little bit more. Now we can also go to effect color correction tint and right here we can play a little bit with the tint of our color and then just copy this tint and paste it on the background and that way we kind of get the same color um, style right here and actually for the background I need to introduce a little bit more red and take away some of the blue or actually a little bit more red here and there we go I have something like this right now so this looks pretty cool and now we can actually scale this down a little bit and there we go and now I will press P on the keyboard reveal the, uh, the position of the design name just go to the beginning of my timeline and click on the stopwatch for the position um, and actually I'm going to uh, drag this keyframe all the way uh, till the end so this is my final position that I want my name to be at and I begin like right over here and now it's moving like so let's jump back into the design name composition and we'll right click new and add a new adjustment layer and this is, these are going to be a few adjustments that we need to do to make it look a little bit better so what I will do is go to effect and presets and search for roughen edges right here and I will drag this onto my adjustment layer that's just going to roughen my edges right here a little bit uh, if we toggle this we're going to see uh, without a background and we can see right here that what it's actually doing uh, so we'll set this at like 5 or maybe even 10 and then play with everything else so like the sharpness we can bring down the sharpness to something like 0.5 the fractal influence play with that uh, see what it's doing I think one is okay now we can scale it down so we get like more texture and the edges right here and then we need to do another thing and that's uh, turbulence displays right here and I'm going to add that to the scene as well what you can do now is actually go to the size maybe set this at 10 and the amount to 15 and that way you're going to get a little bit more jitter in there so maybe size of 25 and just play around with the settings until you have something that looks pretty cool and uh, but that way you can actually change up the design a little bit more then I will pick my turbulence displays and duplicate it once more and here I will change my size to something like 50 uh, 50 cents about right and actually for the first displacement I'm going to set the amount at 15 so it's not exaggerated uh, for the second turbulence let's concentrate on that right now I will close these two down we're going to animate it so it actually looks like um, like in a movie um, of course they did a little bit more time in the animation but I think we get the same kind of effect using this method so what I will do is go and hold alt and click on the stopwatch for the evolution right here right time times and we'll go for like 50 or 75 75 will be okay and that's going to animate it slowly you can see right here that it's animating our background and of course you can speed it up if you want to maybe change it to a hundred that's going to make it a little bit faster but you can see already what it is doing it's kind of animating and adding a little bit of a wiggle kind of a wind effect to our scroll right here what you can do as well is go to the beginning of your timeline and click on the stopwatch for the offset turbulence click right here and go to the end of your timeline right here and then you can drag this down or up whatever you want changes to like 5000 and now it's going to animate to the bottom so it's going to get a little bit more motion and it's going to change up a little bit more so let's see what we have here okay so this is a little bit too much I will change my 5000 to like 2500 and we'll get something more like this okay so let's say we're going to continue with this I will close this down go into my main composition and we can now see the animation right here alright I'm going to just click on my text tool right here I'm going to change this to a hard light so it blends in a little bit better and of course you can still change the color right here so maybe um, introduce a little bit more of the brown color alright let's go back right here so now we can see it has an animation and it's moving like so so this is basically how to do the scroll effect and now let's take a look on how to create these footprints so what I will do is go to the project file and go into my assets folder and I will drag my footprint into a new composition I will right click new and add a new solid layer and I'm going to make this 50% uh, gray like so click OK and rename this to background click OK and bring this below our footprint click on the footprint itself and go to generate 
fill and make this black or whatever you prefer maybe also a nice dark brown color uh, and click OK like so. The reason why I made this background is just to see our footprint right here. I'm going to right click on my background and make this a guide layer. This will make sure that it's not going to be rendered out. It's purely to guide us so we can see visually um, what we're doing right here. So we'll click on my foot, uh, footprint right now and now I'm going to add something like another um, rough and edges. So let's apply this to our footprint like so and I'm going to scale this up a little bit like so and increase the border effect right here. Also the sharp, uh, the sharpness we can bring this down so we get like something like this. So it's actually like an ink drop of a footprint on paper and this really sells the effect in my opinion. And you can still play around with all these settings and yeah, just have fun with it. Maybe increase the uh, complexity a little bit. So right here we're going to introduce a little bit more of the complexity. And for the border, I'm going to, I'll actually keep it like so. And there we go. I have my footprint right here. And now what I will do is create a new solid layer and rename this to Fractal Noise. I'm going to the effect noise and grain and add the fractal noise type and I'm going to increase my contrast right here to something like 350 so we get something like so. Go to the transform tab and maybe change it to like 50 so we have a little bit more information in here and then click on the footprint and if you don't see the track mat right here just toggle the switches right here, click on it and go for a luma mat and now what it's going to do is uh, everything that's white is going to be shown, everything that's black is not going to be shown. So now we need to animate that in the fractal noise so that we have a bright white at the beginning and black at the end. So click on the brightness on the stopwatch for the brightness and just bring this up until you see the whole foot and a little bit more so you don't get any variation afterwards. So once you have done that, go to the end of your timeline and actually make sure that we have like three seconds. So I'm going to right click composition settings. So that's 72 frames uh, right here. I'm not using the um, actual time code. So you can just enter three seconds and then we'll make this a little bit longer. So now we have three seconds of our composition. At the beginning, it's 100 uh, brightness. So it's completely white. And at the end, we need to darken the brightness until we don't see this foot anymore. And now we get something like this. So it actually gets printed in there and then it fades out like so really cool go back to the main comp to the project manager and the footprint right here we're going to drag this into our main comp you can change this to a hard line so we have something more like this you can also bring down the opacity if you want to um, and change the mode maybe to a multiply I'm also going to change the color actually to something better. So what you can do is go into the footprint and actually instead of choosing your color right here, uh, you can copy the fill, go back to your main comp and paste it over here so you can still see what kind of color that you want in the scene. So uh, maybe something like this looks great. And then of course we'll press S on the keyboard and just make it very tiny. So zoom in right here and we have our footprint. Let me a little bit bigger, maybe 15 and we have something like this. So now we have our footprint. Uh, you can also add a little bit of blur if you want to, uh, to actually make it fit in. So go to blur and sharpen, or actually uh, go back to rough and edges and maybe zoom out a little bit and see at the rough and edges that you need a lot more border right here, like so. Until you get something uh, pretty cool like this. 250 in scale and 60 in the border. And I think this will do fine. Go back to the main comp and now you'll have a nice footprint like so. So you're going to see that your footprint is going to disappear if you're going to animate it. So that's pretty cool. It disappears right here. Now what you need to do is click on your footprint, press the W key, and then you can rotate your footprint, press V on the keyboard to move it around, and maybe put it right over here, then duplicate it, put one over here, duplicate it again, put one over here. Just keep doing that, and duplicating is done while holding Ctrl and pressing D on the keyboard. And then just move it with the V uh, key and then, well actually the V key to get your selection done and then W to rotate it, V again and then just quickly um, position all your footsteps. Of course you can do this with a particle generator if you want to but I don't think that's really necessary for this case and then you're going to get something like this. 
Okay, but currently they all fade off at the same time. We actually need it to be like a footstep. So what we need to do is zoom in our timeline a little bit. And the reason why I'm not using a script here is because you actually want to have that kind of human touch to it. So it doesn't have to be exact each frame. So uh, offset it a little bit like so. And like all of a sudden you can do some quick steps. You can see that in the movie as well that uh, all of a sudden all the steps stop. It waits a little bit and then it comes closer all of a sudden so you can do it like this just and uh, the closer you put them together the faster the steps are going to be obviously um, but let's preview what we have here and of course it's a little bit too fast over here but you get the ID and this is the way to actually animate the footprints a little bit so we'll position it like this and then finally you can do some final grading to uh, your whole scene so what i've done is created a new adjustment layer on top of everything and went through a color correction tint effect and just changed the color to something that i wanted it to look so in the movies it's kind of a a nice yellow color so uh, right here you had something like this i think it's more towards this color and then I created another adjustment layer on top of everything and I added and actually for the blacks I wanted something different maybe more brown so we have a little bit more color into our scene like so and then for the new adjustment layer that we just created I went for an ellipse tool and dragged something like this in my scene and went for a subtract mode click on the adjustment layer and then go to effect color correction curves to add that vignette look like so press F on the keyboard and then just increase this amount here and now you get like this nice uh, fade effect and that means that the colors aren't going to be exactly the same uh, everywhere so this looks pretty good I guess you can also uh, add a curves right here behind the tint effect to apply some kind of contrast if you want to so you can bring up the brightness right here and darken it down a little bit you can still go in the red channel and maybe add a little bit more red and decrease the blue to get it more yellow but yeah this is going to get it to exaggerate it so we don't really need that so that's basically how to do the complete effect if you want to change it up a little bit you can go and uh, change the turbulence this place for this design and yeah apart from that i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel for more thank you so much for watching and goodbye